Explorer now uses the lens as a magnifying glass to view a magnified image of a seed. A on this diagram we have to draw a ray diagram to show how an image can be seen as magnified. So and use a vertical arrow to represent the seed. Um, if I'm stuck with these and I don't know what I'm going to do, the worst I can do is draw every single ray diagram that matches that lens. Um, but I know uh, if I have an object inside um, the focal length, it's going to be magnified just from from practice. So because uh, there's a one ray, remember for a converging lens, it'll go travel parallel and then refract through the focal point. And then uh, you also have um, there's a number of different rays you could draw. But I'm going to draw the simplest one, which is one that passes directly through the centre um, of the lens. And there's no refraction there because uh, if, if you're remember we consider a lens to be a, um, a flat when it's um, sorry my explanation is not doing too well today but uh, the lens is considered flat so compressed in here and it exists in a perfect plane along here for the sake of simplicity and it gives us pretty reliable results as well if you wanted you could look at um, how uh, a ray passing directly through the center of the lens um, how it will reflect, refract but um, in, yeah, in theory anyway that's what we do but this is the situation with the ray diagram you can check your ray diagrams another time anyway where um, you actually have to draw the dots going back because they're spreading out here they have to converge on the other side and I should have drawn my object a little bit smaller but anyway this is where they and that's the magnified image that is seen by a person who is on this side. So the, the person on this side is going to see um, the, the uh, rays as if they come from over here and it's clearly a magnified image. Okay, B. Use three words to describe the image. Magnified, this is the nature of the image. Magnified, uh, upright, and because it's not made from real light rays, it's made from light rays. Uh, well, these things here, they're not real. They're, they're imaginary, imaginary light rays, if you like, or virtual light, light rays. And um, the light ray, they appear to come from these real light rays here, appear to come from um, this location. And so they're not real, anyway, they're virtual. Um, C, explain why the lens has two focal points, but a curved mirror has one. Um, this is relatively obvious when you uh, draw yourself a little diagram. Here's a curved mirror. Here's another curved mirror. Focal length for there is there. There's none on this side. Focal length for the uh, other mirror is over here. And again, there's none on this side. You just can't have it because the reflection occurs um, as if it's coming from or going to a focal point. Now, um, the the lenses, um, it's you could cut it in half and you've got two curved surfaces that are being interacted with with the light rays, whereas there's only one curved surface for the mirrors. So um, there's a focal length for one curved part and a focal length for another. You might not have seen these before, but you can get lenses that actually have different radius of curvatures for each half. And that's not strictly related to this question, but this one here has a much shorter radius of curvature compared to this one here. In any case, that covers it more than enough. I don't know exactly what the answers say, um, but if you're an excellent student, you should study those details very, very carefully. Um, I'm just giving you the quick overview. Uh, the magnification of the image is 3.0, the image is 6.0 centimeters from the lens, the object is 4 centimeters high, 4.0 centimeters high. Calculate the height of the image. Um, What have we got? Well, what I always do um, when I'm approaching a mathematical question, I'll write down what I've got in the symbols that I know. So uh, we've got height, uh, the magnification, 3.0. Um, the uh, distance of the image from the lens is 6.0 centimeters. And uh, the object is has a height, so HO of object equals um, 4.0 centimeters. I need the height of the image, so HI 
this question mark. Have we got enough information to do this? Yes, we do, because we've got the magnification, which is the height of the image over the height of the object. Um, and we're trying to find the, the, the height of the image. So it'll be magnification times the height of the ob object, which is 3 times the 4.0, which we have there is 12 centimetres, and to 2SF. Calculate the focal length of the lens. Um, so we're trying to find F. We have D I and do we have any other bits of information? Possibly not. There is a formula that we could use. Sorry, shifting that around a bit. Um, which is um, 1 over F equals 1 over D I plus 1 over D O. Um, we could use this if we had D O. Um, we don't know D O exactly, but we do have um, the magnification from above being um, 3.0, and so we can find uh, D O in the same way that we found uh, H I over here. We can use a magnification formula, but in this case, magnification is the distance of the image over distance of the object um, and we can't directly calculate that but we've got magnification so we have to do a rearrangement before we can do that so um, we're trying to find DO so DO equals DI over M uh, which is 4.0 over 3.0 which is nice because it's one point uh, to wait a minute, 1.3 recurring, um, or 1 and 1 third. A bit of four significant figures to throw into the calculator, um, although I'm not actually going to do that. But anyway, um, stage two is using Descartes' formula here to find the focal length. So 1 over f equals 1 over di, um, which is 4. 0 0.0 plus 1 over DO. Um, DO is yeah, DO is 4.0 over 3.0, so 1 over DO should be the inverse. And that gives us um, a nice setup there because the denominator is the same. That gives us 4.0 over 4.0, which means that the focal length equals 1 0 centimeter. Fantastic, simple, don't even have to do some calculations for that um, using a calculator. So if the last one Laura knows that our eye contains the same shaped lens, remember what we're talking about was the uh, convex lens, the converging lens, the refractive index of this lens is 1.41, that's important info, the refractive index of the fluid is 1.34, light travels through the lens at this speed here, calculate the speed of light in the fluid. Um, so let's do this here. There's a formula. Um, v one over V two. I think that's right. I'm gonna double check it really quickly and then get back to you. And I just I had this back to front. Just there we go. So that should be 2 over 1. Let's make that even super clearer by drawing in another colour. Because as the refractive index increases, as the refractive index is increasing, um, we know the wavelength decreases and the speed also decreases. But the frequency stays the same. So uh, we have the speed, we'll call this V1, which is um, the speed of light in the lens, and the refractive index N1 of the lens. So we don't need the wavelength part. So we've, and we're trying to find the speed of light in the fluid, so V2, and the refractive index of the fluid is uh, N2. So now we've just got to put the numbers into the uh, formula and rearrange, or we can rearrange first. I think that rearranging first is good um, to find V2, because that's what we're aiming for, um, because it makes uh, it's easier to rearrange those than it is to rearrange numbers. So V2 will equal V1 N1 over N2. 
and if we plug the values into there, V1 is 2.1 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, N1 uh, times 1.41, and divided by 1.34 to get a final speed of 2.2. Zero nine seven times ten to the eight meters per second, and it's the correct number of significant figures. Let's go and quickly check back. We've got two significant. Uh, wait a minute. We've got three significant figures, two significant figures, three significant figures. We are multiplying and dividing, <coughs> so we have to go to the lowest number of significant figures, which means this will round to two point two times ten to the eight meters per second and let's just let them know that we didn't just guess that we know that this is two significant figures underline your final answer and that's that